How's it going? I'm Dr. J and I'm back with another guy, this time on Samus and Dark Samus. Samus to me has always felt like the chess player's character. She's always been pretty slow, so her combo game relies less on fast inputs and more on clean, precise moves and lots of reads and reactions. One second Samus is waiting across the stage, charging her neutral B and preventing bad approaches with missiles. But like a space cobra, the next second Samus can punish a single mistake with a long string of hard-hitting moves. Basically, playing Samus forces both you and your opponent to slow down and think a bit, while waiting for the right moment to make split-second reactions. In Ultimate, I feel that Samus has received a number of buffs that push both her and her new Echo Fighter, Dark Samus, into a tier that I would consider makes them at least as tournament viable as Melee Samus, being one of the best mid-tier characters. Samus and Dark Samus are nearly identical, so if you play one, you can pretty much play the other to the same degree of proficiency. However, there are definite reasons to pick one Samus over the other in certain matchups, even though the differences are pretty slight. First off, here are the differences between the two Samuses and what these differences mean. Dark Samus has a faster back roll, while Samus has a faster forward roll. It's barely noticeable, but Dark Samus has an easier time rolling back to punish an attack like Melee Samus with way dash back. Anyways, the roll differences don't matter much between the two characters, especially since pivoting out of dash to outspace attacks or even triangle jumping is often better than rolling now, so it's just a good fact to know. Samus' attacks that have fire count as fire attacks, obviously, meaning they will set off bombs on contact, while Dark Samus' similar moves are electric and thus do not do so as easily. Again, not an important difference. Now, Samus' shield is smaller to compensate for her slightly shorter hurt box compared to Dark Samus. I think that when perfect shielding becomes second nature for top level players, having a bigger shield could come in handy. Samus' F Smash has slightly longer range than Dark Samus, which could be useful in some matchups, but Dark Samus' up smash can catch enemies lower to the ground than Samus without really sacrificing vertical range. Now, what I think the most important difference between the two Samuses is their projectiles. Dark Samus' projectiles go lower to the ground compared to Samus's. The big takeaway here is that Dark Samus is better against shorter characters, characters with extremely low ducks like Sheik, characters with shorter short hops, and characters that use explosives, I guess. In any situation where these factors don't apply, or against characters that are almost always in the air, Samus is mostly better due to her slightly longer F smash and higher projectiles. Okay, so now you know when to pick each one, but how do you play them? Well, aside from those differences, everything about Samus and Dark Samus plays the same, so I'll be pretty much lumping them together as Samus from here on out to avoid repetition. As I mentioned in my intro, Samus should be played very patiently. Samus's charge shot can not only be charged in the air and quickly cancelled with a double jump or air dodge now, charge shot charges faster and does more damage than in Smash 4. Basically, Samus lives and dies by her neutral bait. You should charge it after every knockout or basically every second you can. An uncharged neutral bait can be helpful, but it's really nothing compared to the threat of a fully charged one. So being patient and not engaging until you have a charge shot is honestly very often your best option. One cool new trick that you can do with the charge shot now is pivot with it in the air by pressing B, then immediately flicking your stick in the direction opposite from where she's facing. Then you can cancel the charge if you want with a double jump, and basically do a tricky mid-air reverse aerial rush into her back air, which has way more knockback power and is faster than forward air. Charging your shot while recovering is an awesome move if you still have double jump, but just remember that firing a charge shot will push you back with its recoil, making it harder to recover. So keep that in mind before you go blasting away off stage. Their missiles are amazing projectiles, with the tilted or homing missile being a powerful mix-up as it covers against jumping opponents and stays out for a while while moving relatively slowly, and a power or smash missile it stays right in front of Samus for a short amount of time before flying quite fast with increased knockback. Both are good to follow behind for an approach, and at low percents, they're a great combo starter and can be a true lead into a charge shot. I also like to use missiles to cover techs and getups from far away as an edge guarding and recovery tool and as a defensive tool for stalling while charging your neutral bait. Just keep in mind that only one power missile and two homing missiles could be out at a time, but honestly spamming missiles all day would not be very optimal anyway. Some other general strategy notes with Samus would be that she's quite heavy and her recovery game is pretty darn good, so you can afford to go for more trades and get hit more often than most other characters. While missiles, dash attack, and her tether grab can be decent approach tools, Samus really prefers a defensive style of play. She's also quite floaty, but she really doesn't mind being a short hop's distance away from the ground. 
Just don't let yourself get juggled, because Samus can't get out of being juggled very easily. Samus' offensive game mostly relies on shield breaks, projectile coverage and follow-ups, and quick evasions into counter-attacks. Your opponents need to evade your missiles or perfect shield them, as Samus can get a shield break in a number of ways. Charge Shot annihilates most of your opponent's shield to the point where even a Morph Ball bomb would break it. Landing just one or two hits and safely resetting back into neutral is really not a bad way to play Samus, as her high offensive power and great defense makes up for her lack of mobility and speed. However, combos with Samus are more than doable, and are in my opinion stronger than ever, but they're just not always true combos, they're strengths. What I mean by that is this, her down throw, her tilts, her jab sort of, and her aerials will all knock your opponent into perfect positions for follow up at many percents, but your opponent can very often just barely DI or air dodge out of the way of an immediate follow up. Of course there are true combos with the Samus's, but they aren't universal meaning they only work at certain percents, which varies by the immense roster of characters. So unless you've become extremely experienced with all of the different matchups that Samus can go against, which is impossible because the game is like two weeks old now, most of the time you'll have to read where and when your opponent DIs or air dodges in order to extend the combo. You only have a split second to follow up any attack with Samus, as most of her moves are not that fast. So if you aren't quick enough to react to where they go, just make an educated guess as to where they'll be, and move towards that location, meaning a relatively safe spacing. Then, once you're well positioned, you'll usually follow up any attack with some kind of aerial, or charge shot. It's important to wait until you're quite sure that either of these will hit, or its end lag will be punished. So if you realize at the last second that you followed up in the wrong direction, or will be hit by an opposing aerial, just disengage and continue your charge shot and missile neutral game. The longer the game goes on, the higher both of your percents will get, and that's when Samus really shines. She can survive a lot of attacks even at relatively high percents, while her up throw, dash attacks, smash attacks, and aerials can all knock out your opponent pretty efficiently. Once you get a knockout, you basically get a free charge shot, and with aerial neutral decharging, you don't have to sacrifice stage positioning between stocks as much as you used to to get a full charge. Then you can play defensively to rack up some very valuable percent on your opponent's new stock before finally being knocked out, starting the process all over again, but with a percent. Samus is almost snowball-y, and her comeback potential is immense. Samus's defense comes mostly from zoning with her projectiles, but she can also utilize her very long tether grab and her weight as defensive tools. Obviously Samus isn't very mobile, so your evasion with her needs to be quick and precise if you want any chance of counterattacking with her. However, if you're at low enough percent, you can counterattack right out of hit stun. This should mostly be done with crouch cancelling, as crouching greatly reduces knockback and hit stun, allowing for an easy counterattack. Aside from this, your defense is in your position. Samus is easily juggled, and her moves are a lot slower than a lot of the moves of top tier characters. So strategically think about where you are in relation to your opponent, and try to stay next to or below them most of the time. Samus's airspeed is really not great, but one way to throw your opponents off while you're in the air is to drop a Morph Ball with Down B, as your hurtbox becomes smaller and your relative airspeed becomes much faster for a short time. The bomb itself doesn't do much damage at all, but it can be comboed into, and if your opponent shields the bomb, you can shoot a charge shot at them for a flashy shield break. Samus's recovery obviously involves her fast up special, but her bombs can be bounced on to stall or gain horizontal distance and her aerial tether grab or Zare is an easy way to recover from next to the stage. Use your projectiles to cover your approach back to the stage, and don't waste all of your recovery options at once, because a good Samus always mixes it up. For my final note on defense, I present to you a Chinese military myth that clearly illustrates a defensive technique called the Empty Fort Strategy. I promise you'll learn something very useful from this, so bear with me for a moment. In the late Han Dynasty, the first of a series of Shu military expeditions was led by Zhuge Liang to attack their rival state, Cao Wei. Liang's current location became exposed and was in peril of being attacked by the Wei army. In the face of imminent danger, with only a small group of soldiers and his main army deployed elsewhere, Liang came up with a way to hold off the approaching army. He ordered all of the gates to be opened, and instructed his soldiers disguised as civilians to sweep the roads while he sat above the gates, putting on a calm and composed image by playing his Gu Tin, or Lut. When the Wei army arrived, they were surprised by the calm scenery and immediately retreated after suspecting an ambush. Liang later explained that his strategy was a risky one, and only worked because he had a reputation for being a careful military tactician who hardly took risks. 
so the enemy came to the conclusion that there must be an ambush upon seeing Zhuge Liang's relaxed composure. The moral of the story is that the threat of an attack can be just as powerful as an actual attack. Samus' charge shot, up the out of shield, tether grab, and hard hitting attacks are threats that a good player should be afraid of challenging directly. Understand this and use it to your advantage when deciding whether to shoot your charge shot and approach as opposed to playing it safe and waiting for a better opportunity while holding on to your biggest threats. Your charge shot, missiles, and defensive tilts force your opponent out of certain areas and make their movement a bit more predictable. You could try to overwhelm your opponent after landing a hit or catching a whiffed attack with a quick follow-up, but often just waiting an extra moment for a perfect opportunity is a better option with Samus and Dark Samus. Let your opponent preemptively evade or defend against a non-existent attack, and then put pressure on them. Patience is key, my space bounty hunter friends. Counterplay against Samus is straightforward, but can be difficult for the inexperienced. First and foremost, do not go running around spamming any kind of attack or being predictable, unless you're up air juggling her or something. Be very aware of Samus' punish potential, and plan your attacks carefully. However, Samus prefers a long drawn out game, so don't wait for her to approach you and Samus can just start charging her neutral B or zone with missiles. When approaching Samus, try to do a quick dash in and out and bait a defensive tilt or jab, then punish the end lag of whatever she throws out, preferably with something that knocks her straight up. I have to say that I think the hardest counter to Samus, and the reason why she and Dark Samus will not be above about B tier in top level play, are the Fire Emblem characters in Mewtwo. All of them are much faster than Samus, and can easily approach her by knocking away her missiles with their disjointed hitboxes. They also have destructive juggling potential, as their up airs can lead to an absurd amount of damage. They can even reflect or counter her charge shot in very risky situations. Fox and Falco I think also do very well against Samus. However, as any good fighting game player knows, a good enough player can beat just about anyone in any matchup. In conclusion, I believe that Samus as a secondary or dual main is a very good choice for someone looking to play a mid-tier, or for having a backup counterpick for some matchups. Anyway, I hope you learned something from this guide, as I always try to avoid stating the obvious, like listing each character's moves. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, or check out some of my other Smash Ultimate guides. Peace.